Hey guys, it's Greg Atkinson. I am so glad to be a part of this Dream Church Conference. And um, because this conference is taking place in March, I wanna talk to you about what comes next month, Easter. Man, it's been quite the year, quite the year. And a lot of people were discouraged in 2020 and discouraged last Easter. And for many, if not most churches, they had to have their first ever digital only, all online Easter service. I remember it at my church. This year is gonna be different and I wanna tell you why. But first I wanna tell you about when I was a little boy, I was in Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts. I didn't finish, but I was in it for a season. And one of the things I still remember as a Boy Scout is they teach you to always be prepared. Always be prepared. So what I see happening, and I talk with a lot of people, but I also watch a lot of news and read a lot of news articles. And just this past week, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal. Now, this was an opinion article. This was just somebody's opinion. However, he was a doctor at Johns Hopkins, and he had a very educated opinion. And he mentioned that over the last six weeks, COVID has decreased 77%. And that he thinks by April, we will have reached herd immunity. I personally don't think it will be that soon, and neither does President uh, Biden. However, a lot of people think in the medical community that we are approaching herd immunity as more and more millions of people get vaccinated. I'm actually going somewhere this afternoon to see if I can get vaccinated. My wife is a nurse. She's already been vaccinated, already had both doses. She's fine. She's good to go. But millions of people are getting vaccinated. And the plan that the government is rolling out is that by um, summer and fall that everybody that wants it will have been vaccinated. That in addition to people that have natural antibodies research shows provides a herd immunity where COVID's not gonna be as dangerous. Yes, like Dr. Fauci recently said, we may have to wear masks into 2022, but things will be a lot safer. And what does that mean for you church leader? It means that this could be a different Easter it means that this coming year could be your best year ever where we combine the digital world of physical and digital and we come together for a beautiful worship experience week in and week out that meets in person and online. And I'm excited about that. I've been a big proponent of digital church since 2008 when I started blogging about church online. And so I'm a big believer in online church but I love hugging people. I love fist bumping. I love um, seeing people in person as a pastor and as a lay leader now. Um, I love seeing people in person and being a part of the fellowship and the community. So all that to say, Boy Scout, you have to be prepared. And this year could be a much, much, be encouraged, much better Easter than it was last year. More people are gonna come out, not everybody, you can't abandon online, but a lot of people are going to come out. And so that means you must have a plan. So my talk today, my breakout session is eight reasons your Easter guests may not return. And so I'm going to take an old teaching that I've done and adapt it to 2021 and add in some new components and teach you reasons why I think um, guests may not return. This was based on an article I wrote for Outreach Magazine years ago, but I've added a lot of new stuff to it, and I want to share with you today um, reasons your guests may not return. Number one, um, the front door. Uh, we have to start at the front door, and that means the virtual front door. The front door of your church is online, it's your social media, it's your website. Don't neglect them, don't abandon them. Now is the time. We are in a season where people are uh, more depressed than ever. Depression rates are off the charts. Suicide rates are off the charts. This has been a grueling year coming out of 2020 and COVID. And so we must um, 
we must be strategic with our social media and our online presence. And that means showing pictures of people, smiling people. Yes, you could have some people, some pictures of greeters outside and, and your parking team with mask on, waving to people as they come and people that hold up the signs that say, I'm smiling under this mask. You can do stuff like that. But you could also show um, people worshiping and people interacting. And I've seen churches that show people in their homes, in a home group or a house church, or as a family worshiping together. And you see them watching the screen. You see them focus on the television in the room, worshiping online. There are a lot of ways that you can be creative. Uh, I would check out churches like Cross Point in Nashville and um, Central in Las Vegas and um, Browns Bridge and Gwinnett Church, uh, part of North Point Ministries. There are a lot of churches, the Belonging Co. in Nashville. There are a lot of churches that are using Instagram and social media very strategically and doing a great job. And so take a look at churches like that and get inspiration. Don't copy, don't imitate, but be inspired and go create. Do something on your own. Um, but before a guest ever steps foot on your phys physical campus, they check out your online campus um, and they check out your website. And so you want to make sure that your website is up to date with things like explanations, instructions. Um, my friends in Australia were under lockdown. They got COVID under control as a country and then they opened back up. And I saw a church in Australia that had an example on their website of what they were doing and how they were explaining to people now that they were opening back up and they talked about things like reservations a lot of churches and a lot of you watching this may be doing this at your home church but a lot of churches are doing online reservations because in your local city or region there may be a state mandated or a local government mandated a requirement of you can't be over 200 people in an auditorium of a thousand or you can't be over 25 percent or you can only have this many people on the property. In Canada, they have different things where uh, I think for a season, they couldn't have over 10 people gathered together. At one point it was five. They couldn't have over five people gathered together. And so whatever is going on in your local part of the country, I know California is different in California and LA specifically is under strict lockdowns and, and, and protocols. You wanna abide by that. We wanna be good neighbors. We wanna be good citizens. And so abide by that. And that, if that means you have to have reservations and do a ticketing system, that's fine. Churches have done that for years for Easter pageants and Christmas pageants and Easter passion plays and musicals and concerts. Ticketing is not a problem. You can use Eventbrite for free or you could use your CHMS, your church database, things like Planning Center and other stuff that you can use to do tickets and reserve and make sure you don't go over capacity over what you're supposed to have. That's fine. Let's, let's be as clear as possible so that when somebody comes to the front door of your church, uh, which is your website, I would have reservations if you're gonna have tickets. I would have an explanation of here's what we're doing to keep you safe. We still wipe down surfaces. We still wipe down the pews. We still, uh, de we, we, we fog and, and um, um, the, you see these, these uh, fog machines for sale that we have like at a first impression store that I run um, where you uh, decontaminize and disinfect the room. There are a lot of things you can do. If you're doing that, let people know that will make them feel a lot more at ease and comfortable and want to come check you out in person. You want them to come in person. I would love for them to come in person. Let them know what you're doing to keep them safe. Never assume guests know anything. I've said that for years. Never assume they know anything, so spell it out for them. Tell them that we have increased our service times in between services to clean surfaces, to clean up, and to disinfect so that they feel comfortable. Give them any instructions they may need, starting with the parking lot and what it's going to be like and if they need to make a reservation. Also, do not forget your online audience. For those of you that are so happy to be meeting in person again, don't forget there's always people watching you through the camera. And so when you gather together, pastor, say, um, wow, it's so good to see everybody. We're so glad you're here today. And for those of you watching online, welcome. We're glad you're here. They have stuck with you through all of terrible 2020, 
all of COVID, all of the lockdown and home restrictions, they have been with you. Do not abandon your online audience. You need to be in a digital world from here on out, physical and digital. Keep um, attention on the camera and, and let them know that you see them and that you're glad they're tuning in because my friends, digital is here to stay. I've been blogging about this since 2008. Digital is here to stay. So on your website, you could have a digital connection card. You could have an opportunity for people to fill out a connection card before they ever come on your church's campus. And even if they don't come to your church's campus, they could fill out a connection card. Um, you could have things like FAQs, frequently asked questions. Um, what do I need to wear? What, um, what is going to happen in the service? And you just do a simple explanation of we're going to do about five to 10 minutes of music. And then we're going to hear a 30 minute biblical message. Um, and then you know, we have this for your children and we have child care. People really want to know what's going on with kids nowadays. Um, what to expect. You know, there's upbeat music and relevant, practical, biblical teaching. Uh, I mentioned what to wear, or jeans are okay, or shorts okay, depending on where you are in the country and what the weather is like this April. Easter is coming, it's happening. And so, um, and then encourage them to stop by your next steps table or your guest central or your information booth and to, um, to stop by and to drop off a connection card and to pick up their first time guest gift. I encourage you to have first time guest gifts. Second, what stinks? This comes to cleaning and prep. Um, now, I have been teaching this for years about how powerful the sense of smell is. In my um, green book, my Secrets of a Secret Shopper uh, best-selling book, I have a whole chapter on the sense of smell and how it's attached to long-term memory. People are very, very particular about uh, their, their sense of smell and they can remember things just like this. So if your church smells moldy or mildew or like a funeral home or water damage, they can pick up on that. Now get this, a lot of your churches, just like me, when I go to a church as a secret shopper, which is what I'm known for, the secret shopper, when, when, when I go to a church, I've never been there. So I walk in with a new nose and I go, what is that? What is that smell? Guess what? Your people that haven't been to your church in a year since last year that have been out all during COVID and they come walking back in, they are now just like secret shoppers. They have been gone so long that their nose has, has renewed and they come in and they go, wow, I've never noticed that before. What is that smell? Is that bleach? Is that, is that mildew? What is that smell? And guess what? If you have not met in person in months or a year, if you have been online only and you say, you know what? We heard Greg Atkinson speak at this conference. We're going to open up on Easter. We're going to invite people back on Easter. We're so excited. Easter is our welcome back party. That's awesome. But you have these things in your bathroom called pee traps. And pee traps, if they have not been used and flushed out and mopped in months, they get the smell. I learned this from my friend and consultant, Tim Cool, who does building uh, facility information uh, and consulting. Uh, your pee traps have to be cleaned out. They have to be washed and flushed and clean because people are going to walk back into bathrooms that have not been used and clean in months or a year. And they're going to open the door and it's going to hit them in the face and they're going to say, oh my gosh, what is this smell? What stinks? That's number two. And so every church has the potential for positive and negative smell. Coffee, that's a positive smell. Um, bleach bad smell. Citrus, great smell. Um, mold, bad smell. So um, if you have things, if you have fresh coffee in the air, that's a great smell. If you have citrus sprays that are, are things that put out scents in the air, that's a great thing. But be aware of the smell. And as best as you can right now, as you're planning for Easter and as you're getting ready for this big the, the biggest holiday of, 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 of them all, the biggest Sunday of the year, as you get ready for Easter, walk through the hallways of your church with a new nose. 
and look or look walk through the entryway walk into your lobby space and smell and see what you smell um third park and sit here so people want to know where to go keep in mind that more guests attend on easter than any sunday of the year so when we talk about Easter, we're not just talking about our people, our family, our members. We're talking about the community. More guests come on Easter than any Sunday of the year. So they need to know, where do I park? Is there first-time guest parking? Do you have signage that notes that, that lets people know when they turn in the lot, they need to turn on their hazard lights and they'll be directed to first-time guest parking or that first-time parking is right up ahead so they know not to take a... Uh, a seat way in the back or, or a spot way in the back when there's one up front. Let them know. Never assume guests know anything. So let them know that there is parking available for them. Have people outside, not too close, not invading space, um, appreciating and respecting personal space and social distancing. We are still in a pandemic, even though it's declining, we're still in a pandemic but have people out there with mask on that are waving and greeting. Dr. Fauci says we'll probably need to wear a mask until 2022. So please, friends, please tell your volunteers and staff to keep the mask on. Even if your people refuse to wear them, even if you don't have a mask mandate in your community, my city has a mask mandate. If you don't have that, please tell your volunteers and staff to wear their masks, to socially distance, to wave and greet people and to welcome people, but to give them their space. Never let people touch a door handle. We should always take pride in opening the door for our guests and saying, welcome, come right in. Never let them touch a, a door handle. But guest parking is crucial. They need to know where, uh, where to park and that there's designated parking for them. Um, it's, it's a it's a nerve wracking thing when you go to a new church. I've always said for years that guests are fearful, anxious, and skeptical. It's very nerve wracking when you visit a church for the first time. So let's do everything we can, like Andy Stanley in his great book, Deep and Wide said, to remove obstacles and barriers. Let's do everything we can to make it a pleasant experience for them so that they want to return. First impressions, what I do and what I do with the First Impressions Conference, it's all about guest retention, turning first time guests into second time guests. We want guests to return and to get plugged in to the local church so that we can walk alongside them in their spiritual journey and disciple them. That is the great commission, right? Go and make disciples. Well, we want to disciple people, but we can't do that if they don't come back. So that's why first impressions matter. That's why I spend so much time focused on first impressions and first impressions books and conferences and resources and talks like this to help people think through it because if they never return you can't walk alongside them and you can't disciple them so we've got to turn first time guests into second time guests way number four this way parents show your parents where to go go over the top for your kids ministry if you're not going to be meeting in the auditorium all together as one big family if you're going to have breakouts, graded kids programs, you need to go over the top explaining and letting people know what you have available for kids. You need to have your best and brightest people up front for guest check-in. You need to have a streamlined process. One check-in for your regular members that may, may come up and um, put in the last four digits of their phone number or may have a key fob that they swipe. Uh, you want to have regular check-in, then you want to have a designated kiosk or desk for first-time kids check-in, and you want that to be as streamlined and moving fast as possible, and if you have to help them get registered and have to help get them into your database, be socially distanced, give them space, wear your mask when you talk to them. We don't want to freak people out, and so you got to think through this. I have said for years, years and years and years, and it's in my book, Children's ministry has to be clean, safe, and secure. That has never been so important as in the days of a pandemic. 
children's ministry has to be clean, safe, and secure. Put the parents' minds at ease so they can sit in the service and actually worship, actually pay attention, actually listen to the pastor's message and hear the sermon and have an encounter with the living God, which is what we long for. However, they can't do that if they're still worried about their kid and thinking, are they okay? Are they safe? Are they secure? Help your parents be at ease and make the most of their morning in your service. Um, but have, have volunteers and staff standing by to walk them through registration and let them know what happens when it's time to pick their kids back up, that they'll have to show a matching sticker if you do that for your checkout uh, process, which I highly recommend. They should get a matching sticker that says B33, and their kid has a sticker on them that says Joey B33. And when the parent comes to pick them up, they say, I'm Joey's dad, here's B33. And they look at Joey's sticker, B33, and they match them together. I saw a church with this great big old ball of all these stickers that had been piled on top of one another and made this giant ball. And I loved it. We want to be as secure as possible. Um, but this starts with wayfinding signage, which is very important when it comes to first impressions. When people walk into your lobby, they need to know which way to go to check their kids in. They need to know things like the restroom and where's the worship center, the auditorium, but they also need to know which way kids check in is. And I always say this, and, and it, goes, it, goes, it goes without saying, but I'll say it again. Um, don't overwhelm your people with insider language. And that means um, don't tell your, your, your parents, go drop Joey off at the kangaroos. They don't know what that is. Tell them to take them to the preschool room or the preschool building. Don't tell them to take them to the zebras. Tell them to take them to the nursery. Let's be very functional and practical with our language and not get trapped in insider cool church speak. Let's tell them where we really want them to take them. Number five, ushering. I have given ushers a hard time for years. I have a quote that got um, buzzed around a lot late uh, years, years ago where I said, if your ushers can be replaced with a table, they're doing their job wrong. What do I mean by that? If your ushers think their whole job is to hand people a bulletin, they walk up and they just give them a bulletin. Can't they just pick up a bulletin from a table? If they could be replaced by a table and you put this little table out in the foyer, it's got a stack of bulletins on them and people walk by and pick up a bulletin. Anybody can do that. Ushers are supposed to usher. They're supposed to help people find a seat. And that has never ever been more critical than in the time of a pandemic right now. And here we are in 2021 when people are starting to brave back out and starting to come back out. I just this week, just this week when I'm recording this and getting ready to go back to my home church for the first time in one year, one solid year, I have not walked through the doors of the church I've been watching 100% online. However, this week, for the first time in a year, I'm going to go back. A lot of people are getting brave and they want to come back. And so your ushers have to help seat people, especially if you have seating restrictions and limitations and capacity issues, and you want to have space in between parties. Um, I was talking with the church recently and wants me to come do a secret shopper before Easter. And they said, uh, we have three seats in between each person. Uh, they have a person or a family unit, and then there's three seats before the next family. And then they said, we dismiss by rows, that our ushers walk up the rows from the very front to the back, and they dismiss row by row by row. So it's not just mass chaos and everybody moving. And they say to people, they give instructions, if you would like to socialize, please go outside and socialize in the lawn, in the parking lot, in the in the um, in the the area outside the courtyard. Go outside to the courtyard and socialize out there, not inside the building. And so you're going to need to dismiss row by row. You're going to need to space out seats. You might need to rope off seats. You might need to rope off pews and have pews designated pews that are not for sitting in. Your ushers need to do all this. 
This is the time. Usher, if you're an usher, this is the time to shine. This is your moment. You've been giving out bulletins for years, bored to death, wondering what your purpose is. This is your moment. This is your time to shine. This is your time to stand up and to be useful for the glory of God. Help people find their seats. Wear your mask. Tell people where they can get hand sanitizer. The last church that I secret shopped a year ago, right when COVID was just starting to get bad, um, they had hand sanitizer stations all over. Our first impression store, we sold hand sanitizer stations where people walk up touchless and it, and it pours into their hand and, and in, uh, pumps and all this different stuff. You want to have hand sanitizer stations all over your building, especially in the kids check-in area, at your guest services, information booth. Don't make people have to wonder where to find. If they accidentally touch something, hopefully your greeters have done their job and they haven't had to open the door. But somewhere along the way, maybe it's the restroom. They open the door to the restroom and they come out and they're looking around. Where can I find hand sanitizer? Let's have stations everywhere. Boy Scouts, be prepared. This is our mission. Have a game plan. Be prepared. Have hand sanitizer stations everywhere. If there's ticketing, if the ushers need to take their ticket, if the, whatever system you have for assimilating people and getting them in and out uh, and helping with seating and social distancing, your ushers have to be on duty. That also goes with things like, we probably shouldn't be passing a plate right now, offering. Do you have designated boxes where people can drop their offering in? Communion, we probably shouldn't be passing communion elements right now in the typical tray that a lot of churches have used for years. There should be other ways to do that. Cafe, we probably shouldn't have a cafe open right now. Um, look at how you're uh, distributing snacks and coffee and water and things like that. And maybe think about taking a break from that if you're not already and um, finding uh, offering boxes and things like that. But your ushers are going to be huge in this new season. This is the moment for guest services ministries and first impressions and hospitality ministries to shine. Hospitality and first impressions, my area, the First Impressions Conference, what we do, what we teach has never been so important as right now in the time of COVID and coming out of COVID. Number six, the visible pastor. I have said this for years and I have worked with the largest and fastest growing churches in the nation. I want to see the pastor. I want to be able to meet him or her. I want to be able to um, speak with them. I want to be able to know that they're approachable and accessible and hospitable, even if we have to be socially distanced, even if, if they have to put a mask back on and I need to wear a mask, I want to be able to to meet the pastor when I visit a church. I want to know that they're approachable, that they're personable, that they're relatable, that they are real and genuine and authentic. And so if, um, maybe you need to take a break for a little season and Easter is maybe not the best time um, to do it on Easter Sunday. But going forward, there needs to be some way for people to meet the pastor and to get to know um, them on a more personal basis. Uh, some churches have after parties, and I've seen this work well, where they have a designated area, sometimes with banners put up that says 10-minute after party, and they have a designated area where people can go and meet key staff. So the lead pastor's there, and the executive pastor's there, and the worship pastor comes out when they finish leading worship, and there's, the, there's a student pastor there, and they have different people gathered together in an after party and they mingle and greet. When I was on staff as a worship pastor, I used to do that. I was available in the lobby afterwards in our little after party area, our designated area where we had some refreshments that volunteers set up and we, we, um, we fellowshiped. We just, we were the church and we met people and we let them know that we were real. I wasn't just a guy up on stage with a guitar leading music, but unapproachable. They knew that they could come talk to me and meet me and I could say, hi, I'm Greg. Maybe shaking hands is not the best thing right now. Uh, number seven, finish strong. I call this bookending. This is where not only do you want to have people outside 
And uh, as people walk up to say, good morning, welcome, good morning, welcome. You want to have people holding those doors open for them at the end of the service saying goodbye, have a great week. Thanks for coming. Goodbye, have a great week. Thanks for coming. Hold the door open for them. Don't make them walk up and push the door handles in this pandemic COVID era where they're going to have to ask for more hand sanitizer again. Open the doors for them. Hold them open with your bodies. Hold them, give them a wide birth and area to walk out and and say to them goodbye have a great week second when i think of finishing strong i think of cleaning services time cleaning practices cleaning protocols time in between services i mentioned briefly earlier a lot of churches are changing their service times to be a, a longer gap in between if they have multiple services so that they can clean in between you need to make sure that you finish strong. And that means don't make your first service your most clean and sanitary and healthy service. And then the people that come for the second service, the 11 o'clock, they get covered with germs and it's just junk everywhere. You've got to go through afterwards and clean and sanitize and disinfect. You've got to do this. It's your, it's your partnership, your agreement. I did, a, when I was a pastor, I did a message based out of Philippians where I talked about our partnership in the gospel. And I said, you invite guests to come and we will do our part to never embarrass you. And so this is that partnership in the gospel. You have got to clean up after each and every service. And so um, this is your guarantee. This is your promise to your people that, yes, we want you to come back to the building, but we promise we're going to keep you safe, clean, safe and secure. We're going to keep you safe safe. And so you can do it. I know you can do it. Number eight, follow up. You're going to have potentially this Easter, first Sunday of April, you're going to have potentially the biggest crowd that you have had in a year. Because maybe over the last year with COVID, everything has gone down and most people have been gathering online. Now people, especially those that are vaccinated like my wife and good to go and others, that uh, maybe have already had COVID and have built up an immunity and have antibodies in their system, for whatever reason, you may have potentially the biggest crowd you have ever had in a year, in a year, you're gonna have the biggest crowd in a year this Easter. And so what do you have to do? Collect their information, have them fill out a digital connection card, or if you have a connection card, uh, uh, an area like a guest services area where they could go and um, I wouldn't recommend putting anything in pew backs. I wouldn't have Bibles, hymnals, offering envelopes, connection cards. I wouldn't have anything that can be touched by other people. That's a big no-no right now during the pandemic. However, if you have a digital way, like texting a number, text I'm new to 55543. Texting is a great solution, like my friends at Text and Shirts. Texting is a great solution but have a way for them to get you their information. You need at least their name and email and hopefully their address so you could send them a handwritten thank you note and let them know that you appreciate them coming. They are stewarding you with their lives, their very lives coming out and taking the chance coming to an in-person service. So let's thank them and let's greet them. And then let's have ways to connect with guests online, guests that are watching online through texting and digital connection cards. Let's have ways to connect and follow up with them to gather their offering and um, to get them some kind of digital gift. There's a lot of churches that are giving um, codes to Redbox and Starbucks and Amazon and DoorDash. There are things that you can do to say, if you would turn in your information, we wanna send you a digital uh, first time guest gift to thank you as our way of thanking you for coming. Um, this is, this is all very, very doable. Um, these are just eight quick things that I'm, I'm just rattling off real quick of ways that you can um, uh, help guests return. These are eight things that if you don't do them, your Easter guests may not return. The upside is if you do them, your guests may return and you turn a first time guest into a second time guest Nelson Searcy in his book, Fusion, says they are 80% more likely to get plugged in to the local body and make a decision for Christ. 
a lot of people are not going to make a decision for Christ on their first visit. But if you get them to come back, guest retention, that's what it's all about. Guest retention, get them to come back. Then they can have their heart open to the gospel when their defenses are down and they're not thinking about what's that, what's that, what was this, what was this. Guests have so much on their mind when they visit a church for the first time that they may not hear the message and be able to respond to it. But I pray they do. I pray that you'll have people that come to Christ this Easter. I pray that this Easter will be the best Easter you've had in many years and that it will be a joyful reunion for those people that come back. I'm planning on going to my church this Easter and looking forward to it. But um, thank you for letting me be a part of this conference. Thank you for letting me uh, share with you and um, share with you some best practices on how to get your uh, people to return, which is the beginning of a spiritual journey. We, we in, in ministry are all about spiritual formation and discipleship, the Great Commission, go and make disciples. And so when people come and visit our church and they return and they return again and they get plugged into the local body, we can walk alongside of them and we can disciple them and we can be there for them and pastor them and nurture them in their faith. And that's what it's all about. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. Let's glorify Jesus this Easter. And I pray you have a, an amazing, amazing holiday, an amazing uh, resurrection day. God bless.